The most important day of your life happened 20 years ago this month. This month. In October. We're going to say it's in October. Check this out. From a man, James, forgot his last name, Willis, I think, at Marcellus Drilling News, who I subscribe to because he crushes. Check this out. You ready? In early October 2004, high on a hill off Sabo Road, Range Resources successfully fracked a well on the Wrens Farm. Workers that day extracted 300,000 cubic feet of natural gas. At the time, it was the largest fracking job executed east of the Mississippi River. And it would be labeled the discovery well for the modern Marcellus Shale gas play. Marcellus is the second largest natural gas field in the world, stretching 31,000 square miles. It's five times the size of the bountiful Barnett Shale in Tejas. It's crazy. The success in uh, uh, Ren's Well Number 1 happened 20 years ago this month, and subsequent industry success has helped to spark the shale revolution in the United States. Well, check that. It's crazy, man. The well, right here. The well, according to an article written in the Pittsburgh Quarterly Magazine, produced a very small amount of gas after a few days of drilling, and increasing amounts over several days before it abruptly stopped, so the well looked like it was doomed. But Bill Zagos, uh, Zagorski, Bill Zagorski, our uh, range resource geologist, who's our hero here, wasn't deterred. He's a voracious reader, and he studied old records from this region and histories of shale and other formations that could provide clues as to unlocking the Marcellus. Among his findings was that a fair amount of drilling in the Mount Pleasant area before the 19, in the 1940s where there's reports of brief but strong showings of gas, including several blowouts. And all that was promising and buoyed hopes for Wrens, for the, our hero, Bill Zikorski. Range, Range Resources spent a lot in 2003 project and was about to spend more. Zarkowski was still optimistic that Wrens would, again, the Wrens farm, would be bountiful. But he was less upbeat when he pitched a return to Wrens to the uh, Range Resources COO. This guy from Penn State said, people knew it was there, the natural gas. Zagorski talked to Range to not close the well, and because it was already drilled, not plug it. The company decided to try it the third time now. Try it and succeed beyond expectations. For his diligence and foresight, Zakorski, a Western PA resident, was declared father of the Marcellus by the Pittsburgh Association of Petroleum Geologists. The Marcellus was unlocked and potentially prodig prodigious. An estimated 50, so back in 19, 2004, the guy from Penn State said, he proposed there's 50 trillion cubic feet of natural gas could be recovered for the formation, or the same amount the entire country uses in two and a half years. He later revised that estimate to 489 trillion cubic feet of natural gas, enough to power the U.S. for 20 years. What happened at Wren's? 20 years ago has been huge, leading to more plentiful energy source that would yield financial booms for landowners via royalties and municipalities from impact fees. Never mind our cheap electricity. But the average electricity uh, kilowatt, kilowatt hour cost per kilowatt hour is, shall we? And you can see from basically right here, what's that? From 1990, uh, it was about, about, a, about uh, 10 cents per kilowatt hour in 1997. It went all the way up. It's about 13 cents, a 30% increase from 1997 to 2008. It fell about 85 cents, 8.5 cents, 8.5 cents started rising. But you can see this big rise from 2001, what's that say, 90 cent, uh, 9 cents a kilowatt hour to right there, 2008, buck 20, about, about, about 30. That's a pretty significant rise. And then what happened? When the set, the, when, so 2003 is when we had the first blowout in Marcellus. What's happened there? One thirty to 13 cents per kilowatt hour was it right here 12 years later 13 cents per kilowatt hour it did not increase at all COVID happened and then snippy joe gets an office right there check this out you think that's funny watch this i can do this right here this is the average price in the united states for a kilowatt hour the northeast the average price is 20 uh right here 23 cents per kilowatt hour, the average price. 20 to 30% above the average in the United States. Look at that. 
Philadelphia, 20 cents. New York, 27 cents. Boston, 30 cents. New England, 28 cents per kilowatt hour. They need a lot of electricity there because there's stupid mandates on EVs and uh, freaking trying to get everyone off natural gas and go on to uh, heat pumps. It's idiotic. Here's Chicago, 16 cents. Detroit, 21. We're the South, 16 cents per kilowatt hour. Atlanta, 18 cents. Miami, 14 cents. Look at that. East, South, Central, 14 cents. West, South, Central, 15 cents. That's Dallas. Even Dallas is more expensive than us. But then we go out here to the lefty areas. Now, they don't use as much electricity because the weather's so nice, at least here in California. But look, two and a half, 25 cents, 41 cents in San Diego. Seattle's only 13 cents because they got a bunch of hydro, so that's good. But still, look at that. Urban Hawaii, 41 cents. So why is the Northeast in California have such high? Well, because the Northeast, you can't pipeline. You can't use pipelines to bring natural gas into the northern states. Oh, but they're not going to do that anyway. No, they're just going to ship it. <laughs> they ship natural gas. <laughs> Instead of having a pipeline to go through Pennsylvania, New York, and up to Boston, they ship it. <laughs> it's so freaking from the Philippines and things. It's so freaking stupid. But you people forget how expensive the electricity was back in the 70s and how the insane the amount. Thanks for George Mitchell, Bill Zarkowski, Zark. Zagorski, Zagorski. They changed everything. People just forget how expensive stuff was. We thought we were running out of gas, natural gas. That's why we had coal. That's why coal had a big renaissance in the late 70s because we were running out of natural gas. Now I just showed you the guy from Penn State said there's 20 years worth. This is just his most recent revised estimate of natural gas in the Marcellus alone. 20 years worth for the United States. And that's not including what's going on in North Dakota. It's not including the Barnett. It's not including Permian. Not including Louisiana. Yeah. And that's just what we're finding now. All because one guy, Bill Zarkowski, in October 2004 said, man, let's give this another shot. There's got to be stuff there. And some investors who took the risk with their capital, they made it like a bandit. So I have people who lease, get good money from leasing this stuff. Because it's, they're getting paid because the natural gas is such a, we need it for electricity. We need it to burn, to warm your house, to cook your food. It's needed. And think about that. If that guy just clamp, closed it up, how much more would your expenditures be on electricity and just your fuel as a whole relative to what it was in his last 20 years, relative to what it was in 1970s and 80s? 20 years ago, the most important day of your life happened. Now, hopefully we get idiots out of New York and Boston who say it's natural gas is fine. It's fine. But I don't think we're going to because they let the environmentalists are so just they're just not that bright, not not smart people. They're not. There's a religion. Environmentalism, of course, what they consider environmentalism is just commie stuff. Watermelons, green on the outside, red on the end. But you know, they don't want people. They don't like people. They don't want people living easily, less, less. Uh, they want us to live in hard so that we stop procreating. They, they just, they're not good people, environmentalists. The environmental movement, as I'm talking about today, you know, it's the Sierra Club and stuff. Not good people. And as such, they have doomsday. Like, oh, as they stop, just stop oil as they type on their phones. Yeah. God bless. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.